Hi, this is Rich Next. I'm here with Future Music on the track. Uh, today I'll be breaking down my track Natural, featuring Cheyenne P, on Fuse London, my debut album Know the Score. So yeah, this is the, the track itself, Natural. I'm going to take you through what I've done with the various channels, the various parts, how I've done effects, how I like to do my EQ and compression, and how I like to put my bass lines together. So I'd just like to take you through from the top, really. Start with my kick. Now, I, um, I have a way of working my kicks and a lot of my kind of percussive elements. I work with a template project. So I have another project separate to this and I will, throughout the you know, a few course of a few weeks, I'll put together a big template project containing all the kick drum samples that I like. So if I just stop this sequence, you can hear lots of kicks that I've gone through. It's because I don't like, usually when I'm making a track, I don't like just to have to go through sounds to see if I like them when I'm making the track. I'd rather have a pack of sounds already, a bank of sounds already that I know are going to work. So I do that with my kicks. I do that with my claps, my snares and percussive sounds as well. And also, also the drum loop. So you can hear, I always, I always have multiple samples ready to try when I'm making a track. This is a particular kick I picked for this track. This one here. And this is the typical processing I do on a kick, which is taking out that very lowest bit of the frequency register so it doesn't muddy the muddy the, the track when it's mixed with the sub bass. I use a compressor on that kick just to bring it up a bit, just to kind of even out, even out the, the frequency of it. And the important thing for me when I'm making my tracks is that they function without too much uh, high end and mid range energy. So my bass lines always have to have a good groove to them. Because, you know, when I used to make tracks, I will make tracks and make put my bass line and I wasn't waiting for the, for the drum loop and the, the kind of the hi-hats to bring all the energy. But when I reworked my sound a few years ago, I started doing them from the bottom up. So adding in my bass lines that bring the groove to the track. So I want my tracks to work without any of that high-end percussion stuff, without any of that extra energy. And it's important for me to get that, that groove and the funk in the bass line. Now I've treated this bass line with an EQ here, just to cut off, cut off some of the frequencies that I wasn't too keen on. I often make my bass lines mono, using either the Ableton Utility or the Waves, the Wave Stereo Imager. And here with the Max Bass plugin, just bringing out some more of that warmth of that bass. Max Bass is a great plugin by Waves. Just adds, adds some harmonic texture to the bass line to thicken it up and make it work on, on a smaller sound system and in a radio and in your, in your car. Just makes it a lot warmer. And then compressing that with a side chain on the kick just to make them kick drums stick out nicely and punch through the bass line. Now I spoke about how I um, then like to use the layers and build up from the bottom. So that's a lot of these kind of loops, a lot of these sounds that I've recorded via MIDI. So percussive loops like this. I'll just drop back a bit. Giving, giving a real kind of inbuilt groove to how the loop is sounding, using all this kind of stuff. And this is all manually played in using using one of my favorite um, plugins, Battery, Battery 4. If we just listen to some of these on their own. Just simple, you know, mid, MIDI triggered using my MIDI keyboard here. I'll play notes in. And I'll just show you a little example of that. So, so literally play in sounds from battery four on the keyboard and come up with little little loops, little kind of riffs that I like, and then build them up one by one. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, all using battery, 
all with a, an EQ to kind of take out a lot of the bottom end, which really doesn't really belong in the percussive sounds for me, to really start to build up that bass and drum texture. All before any kind of real hi-hats are in, any claps, but I feel the track just kind of grooves on its own, you know, in the, in the low registers. Now, obviously these sounds are quite dry when they come out of battery, because it's a, a drum, drum, drum synthesizer. So I tend to do quite a lot of processing on these sounds. So this one here, I use the Sound Toys Filter Freak. Let's see what it's like dry without that. So a lot more abrasive and cutting that sound is. So you put that filter freak on and adjust the frequency parameters yourself just to give, give a bit more kind of warmth to the sound and make it sit a lot better in that, in that bass and drum groove. Because without it, you've already taken up so much of the, the kind of sound frequency, you know, that you have available, uh, of the sounds that you can use, the frequencies you can use. There wouldn't be much else you could fit in, but once you get that on, you have space to now add more and more layers. So let's hear some of them layers. Again, filter freak on this one, on this hi-hat layer. Again, just kind of making that sound sit a bit, a bit in the mix. And the same for these ones, filter freak. Again, I use filter freak a lot on my, on my um, tracks. Again, that, 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 that sound that takes quite a lot of space up, but again, with the filter free com, it gets this, it gets all these layers to sit, sit together in a nice, in a nice lump, nice lump of sound. And this finer one here, I use a filter free, but I've also used a, a pan, a pan on there, just to kind of give that one a bit more, bit more width in the mix. Is that one coming out. So it's kind of putting it, as you can see, right and left on the pan there, just to start to spread the stereo, stereo width a bit as well. Here we go. Right, so here we are. So then I tend in my tracks to keep quite straight because I have this quite, you know, fluid moving kind of bass and percussive layer. I tend to keep my, my kind of claps and my snares quite straight because the style of music I make, you know, I'm DJ club music. So for me, the kind of stri quite straight claps and, 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 and snares just kind of keep keep the groove keep the groove rolling. And all that kind of interest in in those percussive layers is what gives it the um, you know the movement. And then hi hats again. I'm using here a pattern, not just a simple kind of offbeat. I'm using a, a constant, constant kind of quaver hi hat. But again, I've put I put in some variation on the uh, velocity to give it a bit more, um, give it a bit more kind of groove and rhythm, and make it fit fit nicely with some channels. Take you back again. Now, also an important thing for me is the kind of um, okay, take that back again. Pretty much every so we've got pretty much everything in there for the start of the groove. Um, we've got another hi hat coming in here. Adding again, kind of a little bit more of a kind of sharp sound that is kind of like a cutting kind of hi hat, which I quite like. And now this kind of acid line is an important part of the track. It's a simple, simple kind of 303 style pattern. Um, there was a sample. Um, but when I started working it with the vocal, I realized that, you know, it was a little bit out of tune. So I had to apply some kind of manual adjustment within Ableton using the, the transpose feature of the clip. 
just to just adjust the the, the, um, the transposition to make it fit fit properly. Going up a semitone and down a semitone. Make it fit the bass line tuning as well. There we go. So that's our, you know, that's the that's the basis of the groove basically. That's all the channels that give the basis of the groove. As it develops, we start to bring in a more of a loop on the top end. Just to give it more, 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 more layers and more texture. So the vocal, big part of this track, I work with Shine P, my friend, remotely. Um, I made up the initial loops and then send them over to him to work to work on the vocal side of things. And he sent me back a nice a nice kind of bunch of ideas, you know, vocal melodies, um, the lyrics, everything, and really just then sculpted those to fit to fit to fit the loop, you know, and. You can see here, I kind of chopped, chopped away quite a lot of the vocals. So I'll go take you through some of them here. So chopping things off, I like to chop things off with the tools in Ableton, just to help, help kind of merge things together. This part here. Let me check this one out. Again, using the using the chopping tool on Ableton to really kind of just here. You can see it there because we're in the kind of intro part of the track here. So we're just really trying to to build things up, you know. And this one here. So before this is a this is this. But I chopped right into it with this kind of tool. Because within the within that start loop, you'll hear that kind of choppy, choppy kind of thing I've done with the vocals. Really kind of adds to that kind of brooding, kind of moody sense of how the track's building up rather than going straight in with the full vocal. So we'll let it play a little bit now and then look at some more of the techniques in the track. There, this... Uh, there, just little things like that, you know. If I show you that one. Just say I've got drum, that 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 the note drum there. Just putting a bit of processing on that, on that drum, just to make it come there, because it wasn't on there before. But just as, just as it drops into that little break, there drum. Then, then we hear the the drum feel taking us in. Near this one here, so that was a drum, a drum sample combined with a reverse, reverse symbol. So there's the drum, the drum fill on the snare. And then the, here the drum sample, reverse symbol, just leading us into that little drop. And then we have the main, like the main vocal in now. Not not it's chopped. Like I don't even try to be. It's like it comes natural. And again we've used filter freak on here and echo boy. I just like to take to my really give the vocal that final treatment that I felt it needed. And I listen I to that it here. Feels good. It's again like I've taken out some of the bass of the vocal. It's like I don't even just so it's not to too um it's woolly. Like it comes you know, a little bit more kind of mysterious with that, all that with that less bass in. Like compressed it, it just to bring up the level a bit. 
to give it a little bit more substance. Don't even need to see. And then the filter freak. It feels good. It's like it comes natural to me. Again, it's just made it kind it's of like don't bed down, bed be. down in the mix. Because here like it's quite it bright and quite breathy, but this kind of brings it down a bit. I just like to take my time. Echo boy, and then it comes giving it a bit of um, sheen. It's like I don't even need to see. And then like the simple delay, to me. doing the overhangs. I call them overhangs on, on, on the beat. It's like I don't Going off on, on and off here. See, see. It's like it comes natural to me. And that really kind of has a I, nice effect in, in the mix. It, it feels good. If you listen it's to like it comes natural to me. It's, it's me, like me kind of even try to be. fading out into the background. Like comes and then some and some of them I don't use it. Even so it, try to be. It's like it comes natural. See me, that me, I kind of, I didn't put it on that one just to vary how that kind of effect was working. Like kind of keeps the ears on it on its toes. I just like to take my time, and then it comes natural to me. And then for this second time through that that phrase, we're then adding back in vocal there. It's like it comes natural to me. That one there. There we go. Natural to me. So on them key words, even need to see, natural to me, just bringing in that backing vocal again with, with a filter freak effect on there. Just to really add that sheen to the vocals. And then we have that acidic, acidic bass line come in there with that extra hi hat, adding some more momentum to the track. And then cymbal hits at key stages, coming up to that little drop. There we go. Given the kind of glue between the sections. Effects here. Important, uh, important loop. It's the open hi hat, like a really kind of live sounding, kind of almost rocky indie kind of sound, like a real hi hat. That one there. This, this, that thing that comes every four or eight bars and just adds a nice lilt to the groove. It, this one here. Like it comes that one there. With some simple kind of Ableton reverb and delay, just to just to put a nice tail on it again. It's like it comes natural to me. I just like to take my time. And again, in here, I really wanted to just let that vocal kind of sing out, you know, and really drop it back to just the vocal. Like a real nice little solo. I just like to take my time. I think it is a great vocal. It comes natural to me. And they have this feel here it's building like up. I don't even need to see. It just another layer here. This one here kind of will add to the building, to the momentum of it. And this uses uh, Native Instruments Complete, I like to use a lot of on my tracks. This is a massive, a massive um, preset. And again, using the Filter Freak to liven up that sound. And again, that would have been something I played in on my keyboard. There we go. 
and then using the using the filter freak to give it the effect. Are you EQing it quite heavily? Let's see how that. Oh, sorry, one second. Let me put. Yeah, it's far too much bass in that for, for that to work how I wanted it to work. So to take a lot of that bass out for this drop. It's like I don't even need to see. It just comes natural to me. When I do it, it feels good. It's like it comes natural. Now for the second verse, I brought in another another bass line layer. But this one was really heavily EQ'd and you can hardly make it out in the track, yet it really just adds, again, another layer. You know, the way I see my music is like a cake. You have your, your sub layer, your low bass, your mid bass, and every, everything has its own kind of space or your drum sound. So you don't let, I don't let things bleed across too many layers, but then I'll have small layers like this just to add more, more substance to the track as it builds. If I turn it up, you can hear it kind of, you don't want to hear it that loud, but at the level it was at, it just adds a bit more glue to the track, as well as a, a nice tambourine loop. Again, EQ'd and filter freaked and saturated as well, just to give it a lot more um, presence without having to turn it up, just kind of saturate it a bit. And another real feature of the second verse as well is I've used some more effects, some more effects tracks here, if you listen to some of these. Again, using Complete, Native Instruments Complete. That, using a, um, that's a plugin from Reactor. Again, you can play this kind of thing in with the keyboard pretty easily. Have a listen. Here. A lot of the kind of keyboard doodlings I like to do might just be random stuff like that, but when it's stuff like effects and, and percussion, little percussion bits, you know, it doesn't really matter because you can then go in with your with, with, with your kind of paste tool and move things around to make them fit. And then them, them little the kind of effects, effects bits really just add in a little touch there that, that, that augments the vocal. I just like to take my time. Like a call and response. Just background, you know. It's like All serves a purpose. sound so now we're kind of at the point of the track like uh, you know the middle eight the kind of break I wanted to drop the vocal out and bring in some more more melodic elements well melodic more kind of uh, industrial kind of acidic elements you can hear this one here first again in like a 303 type sound and I've done some automation using the EQ just to kind of vary that and then another plugin that I really like called Tornado by Sugar Bites. I just skip forward a little bit. Some automation here. It's a great, it's a great plug in this. And you can automate these kind of different different modules, different sound modules. You can hear here going up into seven. And then here later on you'll see number five start to rise. And just also write a build the build the tension and build the kind of suspense in the track. Here we go. Using this valve filter just to kind of rise it up, you know. And you hear that in the track. We've got our drum feel here, the snare feels. And 
And then there's a trick I, use, I like to use a lot, is just putting a nice bit of a delay tail on a sound like this as it drops. And you can see here, just curbing that off at the end. You hear it again. I'm raising that up. And you can kind of just hear it going into the distance there. And again, you know, I wanted another element here, another acidic element. Again, a 303 type sound. That again, I've done my one of my favourite tricks, which is using the, 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 the pen tool to cut into some of these samples. Cutting it off there. Because if you hear it before. You know, a lot of the time when I when I would arra arrange a track, I work in the session view of Ableton, but then when I'm in the in the arrange view, met sounds like this that would have been constantly looping before, I'll use the pen to cut into them and, and really start to sculpt, sculpt the final the final product because that's how you, that's how I get and my, my kind of interest in the track and I get things working off each other by doing that, using the pen tool to kind of make the final arrangements. Again, now we're on the kind of outro. I've brought in the vocal that I that I comped and from the start, that kind of same one. Just to show everyone, we kind of in an arrangement. I like to kind of come back to where I was at the start, and everyone kind of knows. Okay, this track's kind of doing its thing, and its thing. You know, we're on the on the home stretch. And again, at the end of the track, you know, I really wanted to feature this vocal again. In the same, in the same way that I did in the first breakdown, just to really let the vocal shine it's through. Because nothing better when you're DJing. So it's like the, the last track of the night. And you can really just kind of let this play out. You know, it's, 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 it's much more effective than having, you know, a track that goes down just to the the beat and the bass. You know, if you can have this playing at the end, it's a really nice atmosphere to have having a party. You know, we're featuring the vocal heavily in this track, so, we, you know, so let it be featured, you know. Um, Right, let me see what I haven't looked at yet. I can do some other little bits and pieces. No, oh, this one I just got. Okay. And I also like to use a tornado on my hi hat loops a lot and my kind of drum loops. There, you can hear that where that automation came in. This bit of automation here. using this levelizer module there, just to add again, add a little bit of a, an interesting touch without having to program a drum fill or something, just using the effect. There, just, just to add a little bit of a lilt to the track, and I, I like to use a similar one here. Because again, one of the things I think is important in tracks is transitions how you get in and out of your, your kind of breaks, how you get in and out of your different sections. If you, if, you, if you cut things off, you know, it often sounds too too abrupt. So I will use things like reverse cymbals, effects like this, delays, the thing I showed you before with the tail, just to, just to really make all them transitions blend nicely. Like this. So you've got this one here. One of the complete effects here. You've got this one doing a tornado. And you've really just kind of managed to blend nicely into the uh, into the drop here.
Look at the base. Ah, right, the other thing I'm gonna do is this. Um, okay, so I'm gonna play it from about here. And I wanted to show you also how I put my bass sounds together. A little example of how that process works. Obviously you can see this one here has already been bounced down to an audio track. Um, but what I'll do, I like to I like to kind of sequence my basses using step sequences. So I want to show you an example. I use this one called Thesis to kind of do the step sequence. And you can see here the chromatic, the notes that you're using, the velocities and the gate time. If I play this, what this is doing is this is then sending its MIDI into a, an instance of sub boom bass. So using the MIDI input here, the thesis. And this is just a, this is a, a pattern I've just prepared for you to show you this. So you can modify the notes. You can modify velocities, which notes are playing. And the gate time. And then you can feed that into the sub boom bass. So as you record a pattern, you can automate the cutoff, for example. So if you get that playing with a kick. So this is playing the notes for me into sub boom bass. I'm using the cutoff add variation and then what I'll usually do I'll create another track an audio track and take the input from the sub boom bass and then arm that track and record here it's recording and then I'll record the automation as I'm doing it And then we've created here a section of this sub boom bass with the automation on the audio. So all them kind of little jumps in the EQ in the cutoff are all all recorded, and then you can then you don't need the sub boom bass after that. You can just loop this as a as a bass track. I use a lot putting my, putting my bass lines together just to get a bit more kind of unnatural um, you know interest in there because it's quite hard sometimes to play the bass lines in and get that kind of hypnotic unnatural kind of sound to them you know so I use the set, 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 set sequences a lot now I'll put back the original bass now There we go. So this has been Rich Next here on the track with Future Music, breaking down my track natural for you. I hope you've picked up some interesting tips and bits and bobs that you can incorporate into your own music and arrangements and tracks. Um, hopefully you can check out the finished track, Natural, on the album Know The Score, which is out now. Be able to stream it on Spotify. Look for the label Fuse London. Cheers.